Hi everyone, my name is Ryan or MNR Productions and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars TIE Fighter from 2001. Its official set number is 7146. It includes 169 pieces along with two minifigures being an Imperial TIE Pilot and a Stormtrooper and it cost $20 back in 2001. Adjusted for inflation, that is now about $28 in 2018 money and I bought this set for $60 sealed on eBay. On the back of the box, you'll find some alternative builds for the set, which is a nice thing that LEGO did. The TIE Fighter also does include a stand, so you can display it pretty nicely. The box art in general was just really cool. You had some nice shots of the set and the minifigures kind of in a hangar bay setting throughout the box art. And on the top of the box, you'll find that the components for this set were made in Denmark, Switzerland, and the USA. So no China or Mexico here, which is one of the major complaints that many LEGO fans have with today's sets. If you do enjoy the review, give it a like. If you have anything to say about this set, leave in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. The unboxing experience for this set should be pretty similar to modern day sets. It has a pretty rudimentary version of the thumb tabs that we see on today's sets, although they are found at the top of the box as opposed to on the side or on the bottom like they are modern day, so I find that to be a little bit weird, but we will go ahead and try to push into these and tap into this box. They're going to be a bit hard to open. This kind of pains me because this is such a pristine box, but it's for the review. These are really tough to open, so I think I might have to do this off camera. Oh, looks like we've got a bit of a tear through it at the top there. We'll get in the one, and it looks like it's going to be hard to open it. Again, it feels really bad opening such an old set, but I must do it for this video. Here we go. We are into it now, and we'll be able to get into the actual part of the set that we want to see. And you can see it's packaged much like you would with today's LEGO sets, however it's got a little bit of a different type of plastic bag packaging it. No numbered bags in this set will be found either. Here's a little bit more uh, common type of plastic we see today. This even feels a little bit looser than we have today. We also have some loose plates on the inside that for some reason they didn't put in the bags. I never understood why some pieces don't get put in bags and here's our final bag of parts. So three main bags of parts and then some loose parts in there. You're also going to find some stuff like a Lego shop at home postcard where you can kind of mail in and get a booklet. And here's a little, another little booklet out of the box here that's going to have some stuff, advertisements for other themes that were available at the time. Here's mainly what we're going to see here, the Star Wars stuff. And then you can find, you know, a bunch of other themes in there. So if you ever have the opportunity to get this, you can take a look at that yourself. The instruction manual presented to you is absolutely ginormous. That is about the size of the box. I don't know what Lego was thinking back in the day, 2001, but this is a huge instruction booklet and lastly we have a few more tiles or plates rather so that's the unboxing experience of the 7146 TIE Fighter let's go ahead and build this one up We have our completed model. I'd just like to remind you to bear in mind that this was created in 2001. A lot has changed at LEGO since 2001, and this model is pretty lacking by today's standards, but it was the first of its kind back in 2001, so it was quite the start. The first thing we'll take a look at is the minifigures, though, so let's go ahead and take a close look at them. This is the Imperial TIE Fighter Pilot, and he is pretty rough looking by today's standards, but again, this was the original 2001 version, so it kind of paved the way for what we have today. On the helmet, it only has one small little print, and that's a couple of Imperial or Empire insignias up there, and those look pretty cool, but the rest of the helmet is pretty barren. It's a standard Stormtrooper helmet, except it's in black and it has the different print, so that's what you're getting there. Underneath the helmet, you'll find a brown head, which again is a very odd choice by LEGO here, just a real myriad of odd choices on these two figures that we're taking a look at. You can see the torso print is pretty bland as well, although you'll notice some details are still there that we see today, like some of the tubing is there. However, on modern day figures, we actually have the physical tube, which is even cooler. You'll find no back print on this figure. Second up, we've got this pretty janky looking Stormtrooper, and the main reason for this is that it's kind of a messed up print. I wouldn't go as far to say as a misprint, it's just kind of a little off-center there, you guys can tell what's going on. I mean, it looks pretty rough in the mouth region. The eyes look, eh, they look weird again compared to today's figures. We have like the ventilation on the sides that's still there. I like the torso, this is kind of the torso that they kept for quite a while after this, and I think it looks pretty decent here. You'll find a little back print around back as well, which is something that's pretty standard still in today's figures. 
nothing too new. He does have the Megaphone Blaster with the orange tip, which I do really like. It's kind of one of those nostalgic things from LEGO Star Wars. And underneath the helmet, much like the Imperial TIE Pilot, we find a different weird color head for really no reason at all. And in this case, it is yellow if you couldn't tell already, or maybe you're not even watching the video and you needed to be told, but yeah, it's an odd Stormtrooper. It's a nice addition to the collection, but it just looks really funky as far as I'm concerned. And now that we've seen our figures, I want to take a look at some of the more broad features of the TIE Fighter. We, of course, have the stand here, which is something we don't really see with the modern day sets, but it's something they did include back in 2001. It's a pretty simple yet solid design. It uses this big pillar piece, kind of like a, has a triangular design to it, and it will support the TIE Fighter very easily. It also has this kind of rubber tube here that is a little bit uh, movable. You can get it to move around. It's a little bit, you know, it's got a bit of a rubber feel to it as opposed to the rest of the harder plastic. They also included some like blue kind of uh, grill pieces down there at the bottom just to kind of give it a little bit of blue to kind of color match the coloring on the TIE Fighter. Other than that though, I'm not a huge fan of it. Most of it looks kind of wonky. Like it just doesn't look all that great. It was just something cool for LEGO to include to give a little added value to this set. On top of it, you'll find a circular tile piece, which is basically the simple way to allow the TIE Fighter to be placed right on top. You can see it has a 2x2 two two opening there at the bottom of the cockpit fuselage, and all you have to do is drop it right on top there. It's going to sit on there very nicely, and it can spin 360 degrees. It's a little bit wobbly on there, as you may notice, so you're probably not going to want to be playing with it too much on this, or it will fall off. It's bound to happen, but it's still very nice to have for display. We do have to move out rather far to get a full view of the 2001 TIE Fighter on its stand, but it does look pretty cool on there. Again, it's just a nice thing to have for display instead of having to set it on the ground. Again, you can see it can spin around, and again, it's a little bit wobbly, just giving you an idea, and it will fall off very easily if you're not careful. So that is the TIE Fighter on the stand. Let's go ahead. The simplest way to take it off is just to pull it off. It does come right off. It's not a, a big issue there. The wing design on this TIE Fighter is imperfect to say the least. The best part of it would probably be this printed Imperial insignia, which you'll find on both sides of the TIE Fighter. However, the wings do not really come to a point over here. It just kind of has an odd general shape to it. You don't have the inside uh, kind of markings like they have on the outside that are supposed to be on the inside. It's a pretty inaccurate model overall, honestly, and a lot of people are going to ask why it's blue, I'm sure, and that's because basically they were originally kind of supposed to be blue. It was something to do with the CGI in the original Star Wars movie. It just didn't really work for some reason, and I don't know all the little details to it, but they were blue for some reason. The Kenner toys were also blue, so it was also reflected in this LEGO model. Again, in 2012, they finally switched over to a gray color for the regular TIE Fighters. Actually, first happened in 2009 with Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, but anyway, uh, that is the wings. They are pretty darn inaccurate as far as I'm concerned. Just the shaping of them just doesn't work for me. They're a little bit wobbly as well. You'll notice the connections here don't really provide a strong connection. You get a little bit of wobble there. And this could have been solved slightly by adding in maybe a 1x3 plate or tile here to kind of lock up that little bit there. But then you are also left with this kind of weak connection between these pieces and the actual wings. So it's kind of a 50-50 thing there. You can kind of fix it a little bit, but you can't really make it perfect, unfortunately. The cockpit is the bread and butter for this set. It's an amazing custom molded, custom printed piece just for this TIE Fighter, and I love the print on it. It's a very solid print. It also has red studs, which is something weird that they have still not changed with the TIE Fighters they've released. In universe, TIE Fighters shoot green lasers, so I don't know why they have red on the actual LEGO models. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. On top, you'll find that printed dome piece there, which is something we've had uh, in recent sets as well that I do like a lot. Again, this is in the old gray color so you might notice this is kind of a darker gray on the piece there. You'll also notice the engine around back uses a translucent blue piece to kind of represent the thrust coming out of the back and then you know the general design of the back of this is also weird though you get kind of like a weird mix of colors we have tan we have red we have blue we have light gray we have dark gray we have black so there's a lot going on there and it kind of is distracting to the overall beauty that this model could have been I feel. Now we do want to open up this cockpit and the best way to do that is just pull straight up it's very smooth because of the piece they used on the hinge there a very smooth opening sequence and it will stay open like no problem. There's a printed piece in here which is one that we've seen a lot recently. 
hasn't gone away yet as of 2018, but you can stick your pilot in there. You just get them in a seated position, and it's a little bit tough to get in there sometimes because, you know, I have bigger hands, cameras in the way maybe, but he will fit in there. You can get him down on a couple of studs that are in there. It's kind of a stud and then a grill piece that allow him to sit in there and then also be removed easily. You can close this cockpit very easily with him inside, so no trouble there. Again, to get him out, all you have to do is open up the cockpit, and basically pulling out his hand is basically the best way i found to you pull them up and out and you can close this back up so overall a pretty neat and useful tie fighter there are no spring-loaded shooters there's no flick fire missiles there's nothing of the sort so basically the only feature on this set is the ability to put the tie fighter pilot inside of that cockpit as i just mentioned this tie fighter really lacks functionality it also lacks a bit of accuracy it also lacks a bit of strength in the joints it's overall kind of a mess of a set to be honest 2001 was a rough time for lego star wars i think compared to what we have today this thing just isn't that great. However, I think for its time, it was a solid set and it kind of makes a cool collector's item nowadays. It's just a cool Lego TIE Fighter to have in your collection if you want to have a cool Lego TIE Fighter. The minifigures by today's standards are also pretty bad. They don't really have a lot of prints to them. They're pretty inaccurate. They also have some printing errors as we saw on the Stormtrooper. Of course, you get this weird kind of blowhorn blaster with the orange stud on the tip there that they used to have with the Lego set. So overall, it's just kind of a weird Lego Star Wars TIE Fighter. That's probably the best way to put it. Again, no functionality, very weak in the joints, very easy to fall off the stands. So it's not something that you really want to be playing with. It's not a great play piece, but it's kind of a cool display piece for some reason, even though it looks a little bit inaccurate. $20 for 169 pieces back in 2001 was pretty fair and is still a fair price today. I paid $60 for mine sealed on eBay in 2018, so if you can find it for around that price new, you're definitely getting a pretty good deal. As far as a complete used model, you're probably looking between $30 and $45, just depending on where you buy it and when you buy it as of 2018. So if you guys do want to see a full comparison of all LEGO Star Wars TIE Fighters as of 2018, hit that link down in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions for me about this LEGO Star Wars TIE Fighter model, leave them in the comments section down below. And with that being said, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.